On behalf of the Tescos Games podcast, we acknowledge we are on the unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil nations. We thank them for having cared for these lands and waters since time out of mind, and look forward to working with them in partnership. Hello and welcome to Tescos Games, the podcast about tabletop games from a West Coast perspective. Today's episode is a very special live stream edition for TCTC, that's Terminal City Tabletop Convention 2021. I'm one of your hosts, uh, Mark Uesa, and of course I have with me my regular co-host, Mark Ellis. How are you doing, Mark? Hello, yeah, doing pretty good, thanks. Pretty good. Um, enjoyed the sunshine today. So, uh, yeah. And yeah, very it's happy to become to... spring. Yeah. It's fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, very happy to have a break from work to hear some about some very exciting uh, game design news with with Brendan. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, first of all, I just want to point out that I am wearing my as collector's edition TCTC uh, 2020 edition. Oh, it's blurring out, but I have that collector's item on right now in the spirit of the con. Very all nice. right. Uh, with that preamble out of the way, uh, we should. Uh, start talking to our guest. We're, today we're really happy to speak with Brendan McCaskill, who's the lead designer of the forthcoming Stars of Akarios uh, from Oom um Games in Kelowna, BC. Uh, we're excited to take a peek at what uh, this game has in store. So welcome, Brendan. How are you doing? Hey, doing well, Mark. Thanks for having me on the podcast show. This is great. Absolutely. You've got an amazing background uh, screen going on. Yeah, this is, right uh, this is from you know one of our artists, Justin Curry. He's uh, he's from Winnipeg, Manitoba. So this is actually kind of where I grew up, which is lots of fun. Uh, I met him at a convention, and then in my mind, I was like, "Oh, well, I'm going to get him to make a board game with me one time." And here, here's the game we made. So it's kind of fun. Yeah, keeping it in the Canadian fold. That's great to hear. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, thanks uh, so much for joining us, Brendan. And um, you know, b- uh, before we get into Stars of Icarus, just a little bit, maybe we could learn a little bit about your um, your background. So your a uh, game designer and community guru at uh, Um Games. Um, how did you start designing games? How did you get into the uh, the industry? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Um, so I'll probably say that uh, my my tra- my professional training, whatever that means. Uh, I actually, for about 10 years, I, I spent as a, as a youth worker, youth pastor. Um, and if, if you're familiar with, with youth pastors at all, you, you actually spend a lot of time coming up with activities. So you basically just plan live action board games is, is, is what you do a lot of the time. Uh, and, you know, I, I did that at, uh, at summer camps too, where instead of it being, you know, a couple dozen, it was, you know, a couple hundred people. Um, and, and all the things that you want in a good board game, right? You know, kind of good conflict, good flow, and, you know, resolution that left people, like, happy and wanting more, right? All that stuff was, like, actually kind of did it on, like, a, on a, I don't know, real life level. And then um, it just, yeah, I, I wanted to, I wanted to do a Kickstarter. So actually the desire, and I don't know if this is backwards or not, but my desire, I, I just wanted to do a Kickstarter for a long time. And I was like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And I love board games and I've loved board games for a while. And, you know, I've been in, I guess it's interesting. We probably all go through phases, right? right where risk and axes and allies, that was me at least, you know, growing up and then magic a little bit. And then it's like, oh, hey, there's all these other board games. And uh, about, trying to think now, about four years ago, I was like, you know what, I think I could make a board game. This game, Fortnite, has become super popular. I think I could do some sort of, like, knockoff board game, Fortnite, and, uh, you know, called it Last One Standing, put it up on Kickstarter, and it and it did some, well, it funded. It didn't do super well, but it funded, and that was great. And uh, that opened the door to uh, just some contacts here in town, uh, which was awesome, and I was invited into make board games full time. So it's like really fortunate, serendipitous, almost this kind of opportunity that opened up because of, you know, just kind of took a chance on something. So. Very cool. Yeah. It sounds like a great journey you've, you've taken. And um, like those, uh, th- that kind of youth experience, I, I, I imagine that's really good grounding. Youth play testers are probably notoriously uh, rigorous with their feedback. <laughs> is that, is I just, that just bored, bored easily. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so yeah, prime so. audience, a ripe audience. <laughs> yeah, we had um, Jonathan from Oom 
as one of mm. our previous guests. So we've heard a little yeah. bit of the background of the other side of the story for um, for your first game uh, from from his point of view. So that was great to hear. Uh, but Stars of Icarios, it uh, looks really exciting. It looks like a, a big box compared to last one standing. And I believe, uh, I just checked it out on Kickstarter. I think it uh, grossed close to million dollars Canadian. That's got to be exciting for you. Yeah, yeah, super exciting. Yeah, so after um, after uh, uh, late pledges were like million something, which is like really cool. Um, and so it's 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 been sweet. And uh, I, I I think you're going to ask this, but I might as well just kind of go into it. There's a number of years ago, I was I was playing Gloomhaven with a bunch of friends, and uh, I love Mass Effect. I love uh, you know Knights of the Old Republic, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. So these like sci-fi video games that kind of gripped my uh kind of teenage years and uh i was like man why why can't there be like this big box full of goodness but that's sci-fi and i, I looked everywhere and it's like okay well i guess i have to make some sort of big box campaign sci-fi game uh and that's where it was where the birth of stars of Akari was. and i actually started working on that game before uh joining oom um as, as a like uh, as an employee and so it had kind of been brewing for for a number of years and then, you know, it's great, you know, got it on Kickstarter and I, I was hoping it was received well and, and people people uh, loved it. And it's been sweet to see the community that's come up over the past year. We, we had a lot of cool, passionate fans uh, and they don't even have the game yet, which is like blows my mind. So, Right. And I think that um, pre-orders are available right this moment. So people can go check that out as well yep. on, on that account or on Um, I'm sure as well. Um, so, so you told us a little bit about the game. It's a big box, chock full of exciting uh, components, uh, pieces relating to you know, grand sci-fi setting. But tell us a little bit more. You know, like what's what's the unique hook about this game versus other space games we've seen? Yeah. So, uh, Stars of Acarius is a cooperative campaign game, um, and I think probably probably the unique thing is how it kind of blends its pillars of gameplay. So we have, uh, you know, we have pilot and, and player progression, right? So, so at the beginning of the game, you, you get your pilot and sorry, and, and you get your ship, uh, you know, what's, what's a sci-fi game without a cool spaceship and, and you get to level those up. And that's pretty like classic for an RPG game that lasts a long time. And then we have space combat, which is, which is the bread and butter and so it's tactical, um, it's it's like quasi X wing where where it's very, um, it's very like position oriented. So you actually have to fly your ship and 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 being behind enemies matters a lot to, to get advantage uh, and and to do, deal extra damage and you know kind of maneuvering around is is key. Um, but but that's like not like we could have ended there and it's like hey this is actually a good game and we think that's a strong game. But then we're like you know what we actually want to layer on this kind of meta experience of, of space exploration and so if, if you're familiar with uh um with a game like Taint, tainted grail or, or seventh continent we kind of have that similar idea of exploring these these different galaxies uh these different systems um with with cards are being explored and then you can actually like land on a planet and then each some of these planets they'll, they'll have like their own little deck of cards and and then there's all these kind of unique uh entries and, and scenarios that kind of go on that planet and so it's 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 kind of a it's a, it's a little bit of, of everything and it's just cool this is the game i wanted to play right because it's like why if i'm flying in space why can't i like land on this planet and and go do an adventure right and so we we, we made that and i think that's that's probably the the unique piece right it's not just this element or this element it, it's actually like a, a blending and emerging of 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 the multiple elements that sounds super exciting yeah that's the the real promise of mass effect or uh uh what is it no man's sky or one of those grand yeah. sci-fi epics from the video game world come yeah. to come to the tabletop exactly yeah and it's always um i mean i th i think um exploration is always one of my favorite kind of features in in, in those kind of big sprawling games um yeah. it sounds like there's going to be a lot of narrative uh, built into here like quite a bit of quite a bit of story um, along with that along with that exploration um kind of aspect is that is that kind of true yeah. to say no absolutely so we uh you know we, we we got a team of writers and and they've been <laughs> they've been working hard how how long is it 
so so we we had we had a writing going up into the campaign um and then we received some feedback from our community and we took the feedback and then we we changed all the writing um and so it was it was good and we changed it for the better and uh and, and so then they've been working hard for almost a year now uh and and it's great we have a, a prologue which we you know use to kind of teach some of the elements of the game and then we have three acts um and each act has a different kind of theme in, in the storytelling and actually how that filters down into some of the gameplay elements uh and, and then one of the i think cool things about um Akarios is that it's it's a fail forward game uh so if if you fail a scenario you actually you know you you go to the next scenario there's there's sometimes consequences for failing um or you know there's lack of rewards or whatever it may be um and then also as you do your uh scenario you know in, in mass effect fashion we, we we try to make choices matter as much so you know at the in the first act do you choose to side with the establishment or or uh, or, or the sparks, right? And then it's kind of these this thing, and you have this branch in the narrative. It's like, okay, do I go down this route or do I go down this route? And and your gameplay and your experience will change. Um, and also, like you you'll, you'll, you have the opportunity to unlock co-pilots and pilots and ships throughout the game, and and you actually, I, yeah, you you can't uh, unlock all of the pilots. I know people are gonna be up, maybe upset by this, but on a single playthrough, you actually can't unlock all the pilots. Uh, because there's there's choices to be had. So like, do you want this person or do you want this person, right? And it kind of comes with the choices that you make. Well, that's really cool. So you've you've told us a little bit about or a lot about how the game works, uh, but um, I wanna I wanna find out more about that. Uh, initially, it sounded like this was going to a more like legacy style game direction, but now it sounds like you're telling me, you know, you can play this campaign multiple times over. So yeah. so how does how does the campaign work? You know, how many scenarios or missions can we expect to see, and and will you get to see all yeah. the material in two run throughs or three run throughs? Well, I I don't know. I like maybe this is a little bit of a tangent, but I feel like the word legacy is such a it's it's a charged word in 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 the board game world, right? You say legacy, it's like oh man, I hate having to toss out pandemic, you know, legacy or even two at the end of it and and it's true i was I, I felt bad i actually didn't toss it out i i used the components from the first season for for play testing um but uh you know the promise behind legacy as like persistence uh i think that for me is, is the core and and i, I love that idea and in every game i consider is like okay how does this persist and how does this matter from one session to the next um and so, so with Akarios, right, it's, it's campaign style, I guess is probably a word that um, fits it more, but, but it is persistent in the sense that you make choices and it affects you as the player and, and the world that you do. Um, but because there's choices, right, oftentimes choices, there's, you know, one, two or three options. Um, you're not going to experience everything on, on one playthrough. And so, so you can go back, you know, you can start with a new character, you can, you know, choose someone different at the beginning and, and you can play through the game and make different choices. And you'll actually, like, I, I don't want to spoil anything, but, you know, you'll see those choices kind of play out in, you know, the first and second act and then the third act. I, I hope, you know, for your Mass Effect 3 fans out there, I'm pretty sure it's more satisfying than different colors um, for the ending. Uh, oh, wait, that's, sorry, that's a big spoiler, <laughs> but yeah, it's, we're, 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 tw we're 20 years out or whatever, 15 years, out, 10 years out. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, that's, that's, I can, I guess what I think in my mind, it's like that persistence campaign, um, esque gameplay. Yeah, that does sound, um, it does sound very cool. I really like the idea of those, those meaningful persistent choices. The fact that I, I might unlock this pilot at the cost of not seeing the other pilot this time around, but that, that, uh, really makes you care about that choice. So I think that, that promises some really rich uh, decisions in there. And, um, you know, speaking of speaking of testing out uh, these, like how this game works, or seeing more for yourself, I understand. You know, we, we touched on your community earlier. You've got, um, I think, uh, in excess of a thousand uh, members in your in your Facebook uh, group. Is, I, I think, if I remember correctly. So, um, yeah. And they're they're frequently. I believe you've had the game up on uh, Tabletopia, and more recently, um, Tabletop Simulator. Is that is that, is that a good place? right now i for for testers to go and go and check it out yeah so so we were up on tabletopia for a while and then 
if you're familiar with Tabletopia, it doesn't handle big games very well. Um, and so so we, we made the switch to Tabletop Simulator. And hey, thank goodness, we have some people in our community who like love the game. And so like, hey, let me make this mod for you. Like, hey, great. Um, and so we worked with this guy named Ken, and he uh, he crushed out a, a great mod, and it's kind of lightly scripted, which is which is quite nice uh, for tabletop simulator. Um, and yeah, so we have like uh, you know 1,100 people in our Facebook community, and a couple hundred people in our Discord channel, and there's a handful of those people who are gonna love to to play test the game, um, and we have you know, prologue and act one up online. So people can just jump in and, and play all of it. And then each week we just started doing this thing where it's called uh, it's a weekly battle simulator is what I call it. And I'll just randomly pick a scenario in the in the whole campaign that, that I want to test. And I give people kind of an optional loadout. You know, we have lots and lots of different ways you can customize your ship. So I kind of guide that direction a little bit and then they submit their feedback. Um, and then kind of layering, you know, going into the testing experience a little bit more. Uh, that's definitely the, I would say the hardest part of, of this game. It has been this kind of final, final chunk. And then we're, we're like, uh, we're thick in testing right now. Uh, there's just so many iterations, right? And, and I'm not even in my mind thinking, okay, does the, is the game going to be balanced all the way through? Like, I want it to be balanced, but more so it's like, is the game going to be fun? The whole way through because it's like sometimes it's fun just to like you know have a ship and you're like you know i'm gonna do 10 damage on five enemies and it's gonna like wipe the board right and it's like you know i can only do that maybe once or something but it like it feels really good it's like okay maybe that weapon isn't balanced but it's so much fun um and you know for the diehards out there there's definitely ways to make it uh, make it much harder for you and so that's that's you know that's the phase that, that we're in and it actually ended up bringing on um bringing on a testing champion uh halftime uh who's right he's just dead he's just playing the game um <laughs> basically i wasn't getting quite enough testing from the community even though they're going hardcore i just needed more so i just started paying someone half time to, <laughs> to, to to play the game uh, a lot and uh he's gonna be playing it for a couple of months here so that sounds like a dream gig i mean <laughs> <laughs> well maybe until you get really bored of the game there's 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 a limit to how much fun you can have playing one game <laughs> for sure for sure yeah, it sounds like you got a, a, the right people, the right dedicated people doing the, the task for you. Yeah. So that sounds super exciting. Um, well, you've already told us so much about what the package is offering. Uh, obviously, it's just funded and you're still in, um, I imagine you're in pre-production or, or in the thick of production right now. So it's going to be a while till uh, the, the campaign fulfills. Yeah. But, so, uh, sorry, Mark, uh, yeah. can, can oh, I just jump in there? Yeah, so yeah. we are... Um, uh, so we're, we're kind of like, we're doing things, we have a wonderful logistics person, and so he likes to kind of layer our, our things. So the miniature production um, has has begun uh, on on the game, so we we just kind of signed off on all red, red wax seals, and, uh, and, and they're actually producing the, they're starting production on our add-ons right now. So we have a couple, we have an uh, art book and a journal and a neoprene mat, and so we're going to do production of that, which usually would be at the end. Um, and, and the plan for us to deliver everything is, is by August or September. Um, so, so that's, that's the hope and, you know, we're, we're optimistic we can get that. We'll, we'll see, you know, we're not going to ship a game that's not fun. Um, but we're optimistic we can get the August, September deadline. Yeah. That's actually not really that far away when you think about it. Right. No, no, that's, <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. In yeah. terms of game time. I mean, mm -hmm. I've, I've certainly received games after a couple of years and not remembered that I, I, uh, I backed them to begin with. Um, but I was going to ask you, um, so what, you know, after fast forward six months, uh, stars of Karyos is, is in the hands of, you know, thousands of hundreds of, and thousands of excited uh, gamers. Um, I bet you're already going to be thinking about the next step. So what does the future hold for Akarios? Is this like a, is this a franchise? Is there going to be a season two, speaking of pandemic? Uh, what do you, what do you have in mind for this world yeah. in this game? Yeah, I I'm optimistic. Um, I think we have a great community. I honestly think we're scratching the surface of people who want a sci-fi campaign game. Um, I, I was talking to a friend recently. And I was like, I was telling him if, if we, 
did a camp like a Kickstarter campaign now with all of the assets and just content that we have currently, like what we have now compared to what we had a year ago, because we launched just uh, just over a year ago, which is crazy. This was the start of the pandemic when we launched. Um, NBA had just shut down like two or three days before we launched our Kickstarter. We thought we were crazy. Frosthaven delayed like two weeks and we're like, okay, that's good. Uh, they won't steal our thunder for like two more weeks. Um, and uh, so, so I think that, uh, you know, I think I, honestly, when, when the game gets in people's hands, uh, I, I believe people are going to love it. Um, I already am dreaming of an expansion and, you know, kind of a reprint Kickstarter for 2022. Um, in my mind right now, who knows? We'll see what happens. We'll see what people want. But, but the expansion is, uh, uh, I'm tentatively calling it the, the Abyss. And it's, it's this idea, it's basically like Monster Hunter in space. It's kind of the idea. Um, and so I have, I, I wanted to have these like really cool organic space monsters, like, like a space snake or, or, you know, stuff like that, where it's like somehow floating in space. I'm not too sure of the, the lore behind it. Um, but, uh, I think it would just be a really kind of cool kind of twist. And so it's like kind of campaign kind of story, but it's, it's, it's a little bit different focus. Um, and then, so, so that's kind of like the, uh, the physical production. And then we're, we're also releasing a, an app along with uh, the game in uh, in the fall. And uh, the app has, you know, all the things that an app does, right? With It has the scenario book um, in there. It'll have a voiceover. Um, but I think the coolest thing is that we're doing um, a couple, a couple of really cool things. And the first is we have a like a, a scenario creation kit. And so, so players can actually uh, create their own scenarios in the game, upload them, share them you know, with the community and there'll be votes on it and all that jazz. Uh, and then they can also create like multiple scenarios um, and then create a mini campaign. Uh, so they can write their own script, they can have their own choices and they can do literally whatever they want. And we actually have people already doing this with a TTS mod. They're already doing like Star Wars campaigns uh, with with the game, which is so much fun. Uh, and so that's really exciting. And, and, and so we're going to support that. Um, and then we're also going to be uh, hoping to release our own content in like kind of season patches, uh, you know, where we might drop a con, um, you know, kind of a handful of scenarios once a month that kind of carry on the main storyline. So, yeah. Fantastic. I mean, it's it sounds like um, you've got an awful lot uh, in, in development or, or on the verge of development. And it's th these are all really great ways to engage the community as well. I, mean, I, uh, I just, I just, these are all just in my head, Mark. <laughs> I'm not, 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 not a lot's going on right now. It's just like, it's in my head, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, um, very, very exciting uh, project. And, um, you know, it's been great to hear so much about, about Stars Vicarious. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't wait to see, uh, you know, what, what happens around, around August, September, you know, when it starts shipping into people's hands, you know, it's, um, fingers crossed, you know, it's gonna be uh, even more exciting to see it, see it get played out in the, uh, out in the world, out in the, out in the live. So, um, yeah, so we've spoken quite a bit about Stars Vicarious. Um, do you have, I mean, surely, Brendan, you wouldn't have any more time on your hands for, for other projects, would you? Or <laughs> do you have something yeah, so, else in the works? Well, so I, I, I it's interesting. Um, I, I had a, a, a fan, a backer of Stars of Acario's Catch Wind that I was working on a, on a different project. But I had, I had to make sure that I, I let them know. I was like, hey, like on a very slow week, I work. 45, 50 hours a week, right? On a very slow week. So I'm, I'm, I'm putting 40 hours into a car use. Know that, right? So that's like, I don't want everyone to know that. He's like, hey, where's my game? It's like, hey, we're, we're working on it. Um, but the thing with, with any game, uh, they, they go through different kind of cycles of production, right? We, we have, we have this kind of concept pre-production. There's just like a lot of different phases. And, and when you think of artwork and when you think of these big types of experiences, you know, from beginning to end, we're almost thinking of two years, right? Um, two, two plus, and 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 that's like I'm thinking full time work, not not like as 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 a, a side or hobby where that can easily bleed into more. But where I sit down, I you know pen to paper, and I start creating, I start you know pitching the idea, hire artists, do the production, go to Kickstarter, continue making all that stuff, right? So so ideas kind of have to be overlapping. 
So all that saying, I just caveat for <laughs> the, the community. Um, Very wise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So a, a number of months ago, I had this idea for for a game um, uh, that, that was just like different and, and like chill, like a chill legacy game where I'm not like focused on, you know, killing the bad guy or or doing these things and I had been playing a lot of Stardew Valley and and um and Animal Crossing at, at, at the time well sorry not Animal Crossing but I've been watching people play Animal Crossing and I was like man why why hasn't someone made like a campaign kind of persistent style game where you kind of you just get to build stuff and just kind of carries over and people do that all the time and, and even the new Stardew Valley game is like hey it looks cool but for me it doesn't actually scratch the itch that you know I want to sit down with my wife and, and play a game and, and, you know, pack it up and then take it out the next day and continue kind of where I left off. Uh, I like, I want that experience and I want that experience in, in, in a different medium in the non-combat. And so all that to say, um, uh, there's this game that will come out in a number of months called, called Mythwind. Uh, feel free to search it on Facebook. Lots of kind of gorgeous art. You'll, you'll see some beautiful stuff there. Um, and, and Mythwind is a, uh, is a cooperative asymmetrical game where you and whoever's playing it with you uh, go into this kind of mystical, magical valley, and you take on a unique role to, uh, to build a community and help bring life back to the valley. Um, and so in, in my mind, I kind of blend it with Roots and Stardew Valley and some sort of persistence. I don't like using the word legacy because I'm not breaking anything. You can resell the game if you get bored of it, whatever it is. But, but there's persistence. Uh, I pitched it to my boss and he's like, oh, this is like the bonsai tree of board games. You know, you, you take it out. Uh, you, you sniff it, you make it look it, and you can put it back. I'm like, absolutely. And, and we're working like I've already had conversations with Game Trays. Uh, uh, just kind of in laying some fr um, some groundwork because I want the game to be play played and tear down in like less than a couple minutes. Everything's going to snap shut. Everything's like you're not. It's just going to be there, right? You're going to open the box you're gonna take out your unique tray because every role plays differently. You know, one person might be the builder, one person might be the farmer, the adventurer, whatever it is. And you're you're doing this common goal of trying to build up your community and interact with the magical world. Um, but everything plays differently. Everything's going to lock in. Just go. It's really good. I got a, we have a good team kind of assembling. I'm co-developing co-devel that with, uh, with a guy named Nathan, which we'll hear more about soon, um, in, in the gaming world. But, uh, yeah, sorry. I'm excited for it. I'm excited about everything <laughs> I, I do apparently, but. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's, there's certainly no need to apologize. I mean, it is a very exciting concept. So I really like that you're exploring this, um, pretty novel space, the, the way you describe it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's going to be really exciting, really interesting to see how how that game takes shape. Um, it's uh, it, it's always exciting when when a new concept comes into the into the board game world. I think so. Um, kudos to you for for exploring that space, and it's interesting as well that you've got um, you've really got your eye on every aspect of that experience. You know, the the setup and tear down times are so crucial for uh, you know modern day life, right? <laughs> If you've got um, a persistent yeah. game that you really want to see a lot of table time with, then then every minute counts. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that totally. Great. I've, yeah, that... I've had too many bad experiences of spending half an hour setting something up. Oh, no more, never. Right. <laughs> and then something comes up, and you have to shut it right back down, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, Mythwind sounds like a real uh, great contrast to like the giant, you know, epic scale of Akarios. So that's definitely something I'll keep my eyes on. Uh, speaking of which, uh, we're, we're nearing the end of our, our interview, um, but you've told us so much. So how can the viewers watching the stream right now, how can they keep uh, follow up with you, Brendan, or yeah. Um, or I think you said Nathan, uh, the upcoming developments uh, from Um? Yeah, so uh, I'm a firm believer in kind of creating communities around each kind of world that, that, that we build. So uh, feel free to search um on facebook uh and then you can you can get to discord uh also but stars of akarios uh you can find everything there um, or mythwind uh, so, so if you search those things i'm I'm, su I'm super active in in those groups uh and that's typically how i like to do things kind of build communities around uh around worlds because i think you know, that's that's where the best conversations happen as opposed to just hey go like brendan mccaskill on twitter uh, which I never use because I'm in those other places. 
<laughs> which maybe I should use. That's probably a fault to me. I'm Canadian. Canadians don't really use Twitter. Um, but you, maybe you're I too should... busy designing games and managing communities, right? Yeah. That hey, that's a great excuse. Exactly. We should um, we should probably mention as well. Uh, viewers can find you through the Oom um Games website. Um, that's that's another another great place. To yeah. Go, so. Yeah, oommgames.com. Uh, you see stuff there, or starsofacarios.com, and you can get to the pre order um, page. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and check out Brendan's previous game, Last One Standing. Of course, still a popular uh, battle royale, royale game. That theme is still popular. So that's definitely worth checking out. Yeah, you know, we, we kind of, uh, I know this is at the end, but uh, check out Battle Bears, actually. Uh, so it took the best of Last One Standing, repurposed it. Uh, we did a paint of now you're these uh, bears shooting each other. Um, and if you die, you come back as like a smaller bear called a, hu a huggable. And then you can hug the other bears who are left alive to death. Um, it's, it's, way, it's, it's cooler. I would, go look at battle bears. It's great. Sounds wild. That's great. Oh, this, well, thank you so much, Brendan. It's been a blast talking to you about Acarius. I'm honestly really excited to see uh, that game when it, you know, it's in, it's, uh, it's the wild. So that's great to see. And um, yeah, on behalf of Tesco's Games Podcast, uh, I really want to thank you for coming on board. Hope everyone out there is enjoying their uh, TCTC uh, weekend or for this online convention, TCTC 2021. Uh, and uh, yeah, I hope you have a great rest of the convention too. Oh, hey thanks guys yeah thanks thanks so much just to echo that and um hope everyone is having a fantastic weekend yeah so for everyone out there uh check us out at testcoast.games to hear some episodes with other west coast uh designers and developers uh retailers uh maybe jonathan uh, thwaites from um games himself you can check out that interview as well um brendan thanks again it's been a real blast hey thanks take care guys Great. thanks brendan take care take care Okay, there's your audio. Awesome. Hey, thanks. Uh, thanks oh, to. Oh, oops, sorry. I <laughs> need to mute my computer. Um, thanks, Marky Mark at Test Coast Podcast for uh, doing that interview um, with Oom um Games. Uh, we really appreciate it. It was a really cool look behind the scenes of Stars of Acarios. I want to make sure I say that right. Um, yeah, I really appreciate them stepping in and doing their two segments this weekend and just all of the folks who stepped in to do something live on the stream. Uh, I really appreciate it. Normally, myself and Blair probably would have done more hosting through the weekend, apart from transitions and stuff, but um, I'm booked for surgery. And I, when we started planning Terminal City, I didn't originally know the date of my surgery, so I was like... It could be the day before the terminal setting. <laughs> yeah. So, we yeah. didn't really want to commit me to too much if Blair was going to have to run everything solo. So We, we didn't want to commit me to too much for the exact same reason. Yeah, so. so we really, 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 really appreciate everybody who stepped in yep. and said, yep, let me know what you need. We're here for you. Just let us know. So thank you. <laughs>